and you're tempted to use it. Jesus had the power and he was tempted 10,000 times more than you and I will ever be tempted. But he didn't use it. What an example for us. Well, once you get this whole thing about uh, what sin really is, then this clears up some other hard texts. First John, first John is full of hard texts that can be explained in no other way. For instance, uh, first John three, four. If you go to a typical audience of my subculture, you know what you're gonna get. If you ask what sin is, they're all gonna say what? It's the transgression of the law. Now, notice what happens when you go to the original language, and I did it with this one. What it really says is, whosoever sinneth or lives life apart from God transgresses also the law, for sin results in the transgression of the law. Sin is not the transgression of the law. Transgression of the law is the result of sin. The real sin is living life apart from God, which most of us have experienced too much of. I was angry when I found out that I had grown up being told that sin is nothing more than the transgression of the law. It led me to defeat and discouragement because I didn't understand the nature of what sin is all about. There are other texts that are explained by this, such as 1 John 3, 6. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. If this was referring to sins, then the disciples flunked the course. Jesus' closest followers did not measure up to this. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. No. But uh, if you interpret it as living life apart from God, then whosoever lives life in the connection with God, sinneth not. If sin is not abiding in Christ, then if I abide in him, I will not be sinning, right? I might be sinsing, that's a new word, <laughs> but I won't be sinning. I might still be subject to failure, to my faults and failures and the momentum of my past sins, but I will not be sinning because I am still abiding with Christ. Amen. And this is what the disciples did. They did that right, all except for one. They stayed with Jesus. They did not separate from him. Therefore, they were not sinning. Do you get it? even though they were still sinsing and arguing and debating about who's the greatest in the kingdom, one of the worst sins. But they were not living in sin like the people who live life apart from Christ. Well, neighbor, isn't it good news when we see the difference and we can take courage instead of being discouraged? One day I was walking up in British Columbia at the campground where they have their camp meeting. Early in the morning, I was looking up at those great mountains and the river below, and uh, all of a sudden I had sort of my own little vision, I guess you'd call it. I was thinking about the judgment and how that our names all come up in the judgment. And some of us still believe in the pre-advent judgment that comes sometime between 1798 and the coming of Christ. Well, obviously we aren't there when our names come up, but one day my name comes up in the judgment. Then then, 
Everything is quiet. Someone says, where's Venden? And uh, at that point, a man dressed in white with the friendly blue eyes, if the Frenchman paints it, <clears throat> walks to the stand. And he says, Venden is my friend. And I am his friend. And I told him he didn't have to be here today. John 5, 24. He who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment. There were some people with a new theology several years ago who were trying to get rid of the judgment so we could have security. Hey, they didn't understand the judgment. If we don't even come into judgment, then why do you have to get rid of the judgment? So Jesus said, uh, hey, I told him he didn't have to be here. I wish that I could be in the bleachers that day when that takes place. But because I am not, then sometime during the thousand years when we are off duty from the jury, I'm going to go to God's blockbuster video store and I'm going to buy that one. <clears throat> I'm going to buy it, I'm going to take it home, and I'm going to watch it forever and watch it. I think I'm going to run into you at the video because you'll be there buying yours. And we'll watch it forever. Because it's fulfilled. The thing that had once been a discouragement, if we overcome living life apart from God, we will not come into judgment. Good news, neighbor. I hope the clear new explanation of what sin is all about will go deep with you because it's heavy truth that influences everything else in the theme of righteousness by faith.